Hi, everybody. So glad you could join me today. I'm running just a touch behind, so I'm going to give it just another second for people to actually find the live. I know I'm early today, which you probably weren't expecting either, but I got a full day of stuff I have to do. And I'm leaving Sunday to head out to Utah because... Uh, because... Okay, seems to be fine. I don't know what happened there. Um, we're heading to a retreat in Orlando on Tuesday. It starts on Wednesday. It's going to be a blast. I think it's Tuesday we're going. No, maybe we're going Wednesday. I, I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, that's what's on the agenda. So that's why the live is earlier today. I know when I said to Tammy, I was going live at 1030 my time. She said, are you sure? And I said, it's the only way I will fit it into my day. So that's enough small talk. So I promised you guys, I hope this isn't going to be a problem. Because the actual, vi okay, everything, seem everything seems good. Hopefully it's, hello, Miss T. Morris. So nice you could join us today. How are you, Tina? Um, I'm going to get started. So I don't know why it is. So on my Facebook feed, it is telling me the live is interrupted. On my actual live stream, it looks like everything's good. And it looks like everything's good over on YouTube. So I'm just going to push through this and hopefully... At the end of the day, it has all worked, okay? So I promised you guys I'd do a quick walkthrough at the beginning of this tutorial just to let you know um, where we're headed with this. So this is Minte's Lavender Farm. And I said over and over again on um, last Friday is you've got to look at those big sheets. You've got to see them, that there's pieces of those big sheets you can cut down to use for a specific purpose. And this isn't 12 by 12, this was a six by six. But I really want it in the middle of my shaker, just kind of to have these trees and the lavender field, because I knew I was putting all this shaker bits and bobs in the bottom of it. So that is why I strategically cut, it was a beautiful um, wreath with this scene in the middle. So I cut it down to what I wanted it to be and use that. So I'll try to point that out in a few other places as I go through. But so it measures, that would be kind of handy, seven by five and a half. And for a small album, it's got lots of real estate. So the inside front and back cover covers are exactly a mirror of each other. So there's a small pocket and it has some three and a half by four and a half um, photo mats tucked in there and then on the front of page one there's this there's a pocket and a small booklet and again this came from the six by six so did this and then it flips up and this is just a border die I had in my stash and this is just some purple artisan cardstock that I had in my stash if you want to know what I'm suggesting to use of the my colors Go back to the first video, so part one, and I explain in there what I matched up with it. So all of my um, elements, you are able to slip your picture under. Now, you would have to cut down a six by four just a bit for it to fit. Hello, Miss Tammy. I don't know what's going on today. My Facebook feed keeps telling me it's being interrupted. So if you see, can you let me know? My stream yard looks great. Doesn't look like it's being um, held up at all. It's just Facebook because YouTube is fine. You know, Tina, I love these colors too. They, they, are, they are beautiful. So again, I just put the die cut that I could slide my picture down and underneath. So that's the front of page one. Hello, Leslie. How are you? 
So the front of page two, oh, I've been in here playing around. So let me get this back to where it should be. And then I'll show you what it was. So the front of page two, what I have is I have this small flop on the left-hand side and there's a magnet. And then this little booklet opens so that you can actually put a picture here. And of course you could journal on the inside of this booklet or pictures. And I have a little belly band. That's what's holding this small booklet in place. And again, you could put a small picture. Hello, everyone. You could put a small picture here. Or you know what? You could even, let me see if I can get it in under the belly band. Let's try. There we go. You could actually do something like that. And then your booklet could still, except it's going under the picture because of course it's not glued down. But yeah, so it's just, just an added little feature. And here's a six by six that I cut down again. So it all goes back together with the booklet under the belly band. And remember, just because I did a booklet, you don't have to do it. You can do whatever you want to do. Here comes your project. Hello, RJ. So nice that you're here today. And hi, Marcy. Almost missed you. And is it Rhea? Nice, to, nice that you could join us. Thank you, Rhea. That is so kind. Those words are wonderful. So on the front of page two, there's a pocket. And there is a booklet. I did not... Uh, when I was decorating, I don't know why it doesn't want to go in today, probably because I feel like I'm rushing. I did not leave the elements that were on the front of pockets um, raised up or, or I didn't glue them just at the bottom so you could slide a picture under because I, I always like there to be some real estate that is just for the paper. That's just my thing. Uh, and then on the back, again, this is glued down. This actually came out of the, I believe, the 12 by 12. And it almost matches up with this part of the frame, but it doesn't. So there is the back. And, of course, you can put another picture. I did use the, I think they call them cardboard stickers. And what I did with the cardboard stickers is I peeled the sticky back off of them because I like to just glue them down at the top. So they can always get my picture under them. So this opens and opens. And again, more real estate. And these both came off, I believe, 12 by 12 sheets of paper. And I just cut down the pieces that I wanted on the flaps. It goes like so, and then it closes. And then on the front of page three, this is what's holding this pocket shut. So again, they're three and a half by four and a half. Did make these a little bigger because I really wanted to showcase the three by four cut apart, but I also wanted to triple mat. So that's why I did three and a half by four and a half. And then it opens and then it opens. Again, there is room to put your cut down picture. And then we have two photo mats, six and a quarter by four and a quarter or four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And these two, I should just add, so you get two sheets of paper with this collection. So it's six designs, but you get a total of 12 sheets in the 12 by 12. And what I did with the other three by four cut apart is I cut it down to make it into some, some photo mats or for the fronts of some photo mats, because I often like that look. It's like a collage of the paper. So they just tuck in here closes up and then these two guys are what hold it shut. Now I only put magnets on the back of the base pages. I did not. There's no place in this album where there's magnets on the front and back of any page. I have to tell a couple corrections in the cutting guide but you know that's the way it goes when you've got a zillion things going on. So the back of page three is another magnet that's holding it shut and it has room for a picture. And then room, let me move this up for a picture. And then in this pocket that's on this flap is another booklet that opens this way. 
with lots of real estate for pictures or journaling. So it's usually easier just to lift it up. And it just slides in. Oh, got sirens outside. I wonder where they're going. Uh, so on the front of page four, it's a set of stacked kind of pockets or a pocket with a band, belly band. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but they're really loud. So three and a half by four and a halfs. Again, these are the, the cut, of, cut aparts. And then a booklet in the pocket, the top pocket, that goes all the way to the bottom, okay? It's another booklet. So this is why I call it a pocket with a belly band. Because this is your pocket and this is your belly band. And of course, more die cuts. And they slide in like so. And then the back of page four is a flap to the right and to the left. There's a magnet here. And again, just like I said in all the other pages, these are all so that you can put pictures underneath them. So, and of course, like I said too, the back pocket is a mirror of the front pocket, just with different three by four cut parts. Nothing on the back. So, last week we did the actual album construction and we did the base pages and oh the hinge and the base pages and that's as far as we took it so now this week we're going to move on and continue with our construction i just want to talk about the cutting guide for just one second so if you go to country craft no if you go to the facebook group called scrapbookers of country craft creations and you google my name you will find the cutting guide. I will eventually get a link. Uh, no, I will eventually put my Facebook group in the YouTube videos so you can find the cutting guide there. Just haven't had time. It's been crazy busy. But I do have to tell you, there's a couple of little oopses. Nothing big. It's not about cutting. It's One is about scoring. So on the page one back, where it says the booklet, that's five and a half by seven. I say in my instructions to score with the five and a half side along the top. It should actually be the seven inch side along the top. So that's one little oops. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a cutting guide from Bonnie without some oopses in it. <laughs> Hello, Alice. That's that's why we have Tanya who 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 goes through and and uh, um uh what's the word I want? She goes through and she makes our projects when we're doing them at retreats to hopefully prevent any of these little oopses like this. It's just I got busy. I was I was too busy copying and pasting. And then on the front of page three, I'm telling you to hear a magnet. There is no magnet on the front of page three. And the last little oops is you needed to cut four photo mats for the inside front and back cover. And I'm telling you in the instructions to only cut three. So they're very small little oopses. Nothing that's going to really mess anything up. And you know what? If you did score your papers already, don't sweat it. Because you know what? Just take your burnishing tool and burnish out that score line that you put on the five and a half inch side and rescore on the seven inch side. Nobody will ever know the difference once you get your pattern paper on top of it. So those are my oopses. I didn't mean to quite talk that long before we got started, but you guys know if I get long-winded, you can just fast forward through me when you're doing the project. All right, so let's get the instructions someplace where I can see them. And right there looks like a good spot. Let's get the book in here. Let's bring in some magnets because we know we're going to need them. So there is the book as far as we got it. And... We are going to work on page one front. So I'm going to give you some information. So on page one front, throw that, not throw, but gently place it up there. On page one front, we have some flaps. Some, no, yeah, page one front, get to the right page. You get to the right page, Bonnie. You have a flap that measures 
five by seven. And on the seven inch side, you are going to score at one half. So that's one thing we've got to do. And then we're making a pocket on the front of page one. And it measures four and a half by five and a half. And what we want to do is on the four and a half inch side, we're going to score at one half. And then we are going to rotate and score at, well, there might be another little oopsie error here. Um, give me one second here. Okay, I know what I did. Yes, there is. The paper's cut right, but you don't want to score on both sides. <laughs> Let me go through this again. So on the four and a half inch side, you are going to score at one half. You are going to rotate it and score at one half. Only one half, only score at one one half when you rotate. So I get to show you how to get rid of a score line. This score line that I put on this side, I don't want it. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my burnishing tool and I'm burnishing out that score line. Yes, you will still see the line if you look closely, but by the time you have your pattern paper on this, you are never going to know it was there, okay? So we are going to fold on our score lines and we're gonna fold the other way. And I'll show you why I'm changing the direction of my fold. Now remember this is artisan, so I can burnish. And there was a little booklet too for this pocket and it measures nine and a half by six. And on the nine and a half inch side, you are scoring at four and three quarters. Thank you, Diane. Okay, so we're gonna burnish all these score lines on all these pieces. And before we put them in the book, we're gonna do some dry fitting. Just to make sure I didn't, yeah, I'm happy. So I'm taking the pocket, I'm gonna start with the pocket because it's got a little work to be done on it. We are going to cut through the X to get the bulk out. We are also going to miter the half inch tab on that side. So this is what you should have. So there's your half inch tab and your half inch tab. You miter here, you miter here, and you also miter at the top of the pocket like so. You know how it goes. You can't have perfect tutorials all the time. And like I say, that's why you need to watch it. All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to fold your half inch tab at the, on the right hand side under and your half inch tab at the bottom of the pocket under. You're going to need your ruler. And I said, with the half inch tabs folded, measure two inches from the top right hand side. So I'm just gonna take my little Tim Holtz ruler, sorry from my arm reaching across, and I'm putting just a small tick. Okay, you can just barely see it. We can erase this. And then from the bottom left hand side, so that's over here, you put another tick. Okay, so then you are going to get your cutter that's hiding, bring it in. And I am going to put my cutter, like this is where I like to have my Fiskars cutter because I can do these angle cuts so easily. What I want to do is I am going to line up the tap, little pencil mark I made from the right hand side. So that's it. That's it right there. And then I'm also lining up with and here a second, I just want to oh, see I was going with the wrong little mark. You know how you go some days, maybe this isn't the day to be crafting. Hopefully, hopefully these little oopses, and that wasn't really an oops, it was just an oversight. 
All right, try this one more time. There's our dot. And there's our dot. So we got one dot here and one dot there. And I'm lining them up with the wire that runs down the middle of this Fisker, Fiskars cutter. And I've had this cutter for forever. I like to really hold it in place. Move it a little bit. There you go. And there is your cut, your angle pocket. And then all you do with your pattern paper, so let me get a piece of white paper just to show you. So what we know is we know that this pocket, another tip, this pocket is five by four. So I am going to pretend this is my pattern paper. So I'm going to cut a piece of pattern paper that measures, and hopefully this works, four and seven eighths by, this may not, three and seven eighths. So hopefully this is going to work, what I'm about to do here. So it should be an eighth of an inch smaller. I'm probably going to, because my three, my three and seven eighths is sort of, I call it in the land of Oz, where you, not, you don't really see it. Sometimes your cut needs adjusting. That looks like way too much about there. I just cut a little another sliver off of it. I didn't have enough of a margin. So remember we're pretending this is pattern paper. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to line it up. And oh yeah, I'd be good with that. That looks like a nice, nice size for my pocket. So all you do is you tuck it inside. So you're going to tuck it inside the pocket with the flaps folded. And you can do this either before you glue it to the, the base page, or you can do it like I'm doing it now where we're doing it ahead of time. And I'm just going to lightly take my pencil and draw a line. Then I'm going to put this back into my cutter and I'm going to line up my line. And I am going to cut it. And if everything has worked the way it's supposed to work, I should have a perfect piece of pattern paper. And sometimes it doesn't, and that's when we're going to tweak it a little bit. So for some reason, oh, I see what happened. We are going to, and I know Tammy says never to do this. But I find that sometimes this is the only way I can fix my little issue. So I'm just putting it back in my cutter. And I cut a little bit more off the angle. And I know Tammy says never cut from the angle side, cut from the other two sides. But it doesn't always work for me. So this is what I have found works best in my world. And I can almost live with this. I'm happy with my angle now. My angle is good. But I am going to cut a little bit off this side and off the bottom. So that's why I always say you're going to have to do some dry fitting with the pattern paper. If you're looking at what I'm doing right now and you're going, this is not for me, just make it a, a regular flap, a pocket. Just make it a regular pocket. Add a half an inch to this measurement and fold it under and just make it a regular pocket. All the making is not to be stressful, but if you're willing to take a chance with me, and again, I'm gonna dry fit before I continue, and you see, that made all the difference in the world when I took off that little bit. I could be happy with this going down on my page. I might just take a little sliver off of the bottom and again, I'm talking just a little sliver, like less than a sixteenth. But I often um, play with my pattern paper where I cut just a little bit off of it. 
there we go. Now I'd be perfectly happy with that. And there's your, there's your pattern paper that would go on the front of the pocket. I know this is white because I haven't decided what the pattern paper is going to be. And I'm going to be doing all this after when it's laying on the flap. Okay, so let's put this puppy together so that we can move on. I am going to attach the pocket to that five by seven flap that we did a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Just because sometimes it's easier to do it when it's not already in the book. So add your adhesive. Right down there in that corner. And line it up with the bottom of the flap. Remember, that's why I like to use my the, the Dries Clear Art Glitter Glue. Because it gives me a second to see that everything is where it should be. Let me get rid of these bits of paper before I'm going to put that up there. Because I'm going to use that as my template when I actually do my pattern paper for this front pocket. All right, and you guys know me that I like to put a little bit of sellotape. So I'm not mentioning any brand. Burnish. All right, and then I'm adding glue to the half inch tab that's on the right hand side. I always like to work from the bottom and just kind of push them up and burnish it. There we go. Now, I did not round any corners on this flap because it has a pocket. You could. I've done it on other projects and I actually I quite like it. Hello, Linda. You are not late. Never think you're late. You are just fine. Never sweat it. Life is too short. Now, I am going to miter the half inch tab on my five and five by seven eight flap. That was that first me me measurement I gave you? I am turning my book, make sure I'm turning my book upside down. So I've got the, this is the top of the book closest to me. And I'm doing that so that I can center. I really didn't need a miter that flat, but it just, it's force of habit. And I'm just sort of dry fitting. I'm going to be happy with all of it. So I'm going to add my adhesive and make sure you're pretty generous with the adhesive. Like not gobs of it, but enough that it's got good coverage. And then white paper. To be honest with you, when I'm working with white, I tend to go for the black. I have a piece of black paper that I put under it just to help. Move it a little so I'm centering it side to side. And we already did the dry fit, so we know that it's going to fit burnish. Okay. And burnish again. So get rid of the white paper. And there's your flap on the front of page one. And then you've got this wonderful booklet. Remember that was the um, six by nine and a half that we scored at four and three quarters. I'm going to use my corner rounder. And we're going to round the corners on the booklet. Because I find when I round, <laughs> excuse me, when I round the corners on the booklet, I end up with not having anything catching. And look at, see that score line I had made? You can hardly see it. And when you get your pretty pattern paper on top of it, so again, pretend this is pattern paper, you are never going to know I scored there. Never in a zillion years. So that is the front a page one done so it just opens up with all this real estate for pictures now we're going to turn to the back of page one and on the back of page one we that's where we have that belly band and that little flap and the big flap 
So let's talk about our papers. Do the book for a second. Take off the paper clip without leaving a mark on our paper. All right, so on the back of page one, you have a flap. Okay, no, you have a, yes, you have a flap. And it measures five and a half by six and a half, less a sixteenth. And all I do, I'm just going to show you on one. So here is our six and a half inch paper in our cutter. And of course, mine is short right now because I've already, I just scoot it over to like that little tick on this particular cutter and I cut. And that gets me to that sixteenth of an inch that I want. You are going to put it in your scoreboard with the five and a half along the top and score at one half. So that's one thing you're going to do. Now you need a belly band. Bring the book back in. No, let's start with this one. Then what we've got, so this is the flap, big flap. Then we have this teeny tiny flap and it measures three by four and a quarter. And on the four and a quarter side, we're measure, we score it one half. So that gives us this. And then the little booklet that goes under the belly band, which is this piece, it measures five and a half by seven. And I scored it three and a half. And then this belly band that goes here, it measures one and a half by seven and a half less a sixteenth. So again, I just shaved a little off of it. And on the seven and a half inch side, you scored at one half, rotated it to the opposite end on the opposite end on the seven and a half inch side, and you scored at one half again. So let's tuck that in there. And there is a magnet on this page. Put you back up here. We are going to get out two magnets before I forget. I always say they they package these magnets like they're gold. Well, technically, I guess they are. And remember, you can get magnets at countrycraftcreations.com. And if they are sold out right now, they'll be back in stock shortly. Okay, so there's our two magnets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them on my score pal. Do you know there's a magnet up here on your score pal? And it's a perfect place to put your magnets when you're working. All right, so let's burnish on these score lines. Don't think I need that pencil anymore. So we're gonna try and I'm gonna try and keep my work surface as tidy as I can. So that's that score line. There's a little flap that's going to go on top of it with a magnet on it. Here's the belly band, the other end of the belly band, and the little booklet. Ooh, more sirens. That's unusual for our little town. Not quite sure what's going on. All right. So we've got the booklet in here. We've got to do some mitering. So I'm going to miter the half inch tabs on the biggest of the flaps. It's going to go like so. And I'm mitering these half inch tabs because it um, goes from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. So let me get this and turn. And dry fit. So right now, this is the top of the book. This is the bottom of the book. So I just, and I'm actually going to turn it so it's closer to me. So rearranged it. Top of the book, bottom of the book. Left hand side has the top of the book. Right hand side has the bottom of the book. And the other thing I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it once it's in the book, is I'm going to round these corners. But I just find that when you're putting it in the book, to have square corners is easier to match up with the base page. 
think that should make sense for everybody. You guys are so quiet. Mind you, you're probably busy doing other things while you're watching. I totally get it. I do that too. All right, so there's your base page, or your flap on the base page. Make sure if there's any adhesive, you're getting it. The baby wipe. Okay. Now, we want to put down this smaller flap, and I'm just going to eyeball it. You can do whatever makes you happy. We could we could officially measure it if we wanted to, but I think I can be happy with eyeballing it today. So we're going to add a teaspoon. You don't need a miter, the half inch tabs on this little tiny flap. And this is just an accent flap, nothing more. And the idea behind it is just to hold the booklet when it's in place. But again, you don't want to do that booklet. You might not want this flap. So giving it a good burnish. And I'm going to miter these pieces now. And the other side. I'm going to turn it so it's the right way. It's easier to to. Um, around my corners that way. And some people don't round any corners. They keep them all nice and square. Again, that's just the look you like in your booklet. Okay, so now the belly band. All I'm going to say about the belly band is I want my belly band not to be peeking out from this flap. So I don't want my belly band over here. I want my belly band backed up on the base page about a half an inch, give or take, because the, the idea is just, it's just for this booklet to be tucked in under. So I'd be happy with that. So once I get the position I like, I, I very rarely lift up my belly band again completely. But in this case, I did skew it, so I gotta straighten it. There's the belly band. Open. Okay. Add adhesive. And I didn't miter the half inch tab on this belly band. You could, if that's what you feel you need to do. But again, that's a choice. All right, so I'm going to round the corners on that little booklet. do that off camera and I do it off camera because I get a little container sitting off camera that I put my little bits in. All right so now we want to do our magnets and what I'm going to suggest we do is we adhere the one that's going to be on this little flap first so it's in in the middle. So we want to do this one first. I need to move my Thing back up so you can see me working because I often work at the bottom of the scoreboard. There we go. All right, not by the technology. So I'm going to put one of my magnets right in the center of this small flap. Because remember, it's only there to hold the booklet. So I'm just going to put it in the center. And those of you that know me know that I always like to put a little bit of dry adhesive tape over my magnets. Never had one move. But it's just something I've always done. And it's hard to stop once you do something. Okay, and we're going to lay it down. And there we go. So there is the other half of that magnet. Some more tape. And voila, we have 
Oh, the other thing I should tell you is I did, I did put pattern paper on the front and the back of this little booklet because technically when the booklet is inserted, it's backwards. So for this to work, you have to, let's get this lined up properly. For this to work, you've got to have your booklet in with the back showing. So you want to make sure you have um, pattern paper on both sides, just so it looks finished. All right. So that's page one, front and back finished. We got three more to go. So page two. This album comes together so quickly, even with my little oopses. All right. So on page two, we have a pocket that measures four by seven and a quarter. On the four inch side, you are going to score at one half. You are going to rotate to the seven and a quarter inch side. And you could, no, there's no need to, forget that. You could, um, no, you're going to score at one half on the seven and a quarter inch side, rotate completely around and score at one half again. And the booklet that goes inside that little pocket measures six by eight and a half. And on the eight and a half inch side, I scored at four and a quarter. Now I'm going to give you another little tip. Another Bonnie tip. So let's fold on our score lines for the pocket. Must be warm outside today. Yeah, it's a, so remember I'm in Canada. So what I'm gonna tell you is in Celsius, our temperature outside is 18. Just soaking it in. Thanks, Tina. You know what? I'm going to say what Tammy often says. Sometimes it's better to watch me first, then go back and make it because I can have oopses because I don't have Tanya that has proofread my work. And any of you that know me know I do do oopses. I'm human. Hello, Linda. All right. So what we did is we got our pocket ready to go on the base page. So I mitered my corners on my half inch tabs at the bottom of the pocket, and then I mitered my half inch tabs on the top. Now, here's your trick. So sometimes what we like to do is we like to put our pattern paper down, and then we like to add the pocket. And that's what I did in this case. So here's the trick so you don't lose this pocket. Invest in some repositionable tape. Now I have this great monster um, tape runner, but you can get these in all sizes. Just make sure that the tape says it's repositionable. And often when I'm creating, I will use repositionable tape to make sure everything's going to fit. Nothing's going to uh, catch on anything else. Hello, Cheryl. It's, it's just what I do. So you've got repositionable tape. You can put your pocket approximately where you're going to want it at the end of the day. And there it is. It's attached to the book. Now watch. It just comes right off. So now you can continue with your construction, but you've got your pocket on the page you want to have it on. So I always say, I always have repositionable tape at home. Be just for this purpose, and I'll give you a trick tip. If you're going to a retreat, bring repositionable tape. I, I, I would definitely put that on my, on my personal list of things I want to bring, just in case I'm faced with this, where I haven't decided on pattern paper, but I know I've got a pocket, and then you can do this. You can also use a paper clip, but the only problem with paper clips, I find when you get them into your book, is sometimes they leave a mark at the top. And I know there's a zillion other ideas as to um, what you can do to solve the problem. So now for the pocket, I'm gonna burnish it first. Because if it's not square, it's easier to take care of this before I round the corners. 
Now I'm going to round the corners. And I'm pretty sure Tammy is trying to get these corner rounders back in stock. I don't know if she's there, if she will could answer that so that I haven't told you guys something that's not fact. So here is your pocket. Opens like so. This particular pocket I am, or booklet, I should say, not pocket. I'm putting in my pocket with the rounded corners to the outside. Now remember, the reason it's not going to tuck in all the way right now is I have no tape across the bottom of the pocket. And it's repositionable, so it could move a little bit. I prefer to kind of just leave it like that and move on to the back of page three, or back of page two. Okay, so there's my trick of the day. Get some repositionable tape. There's all kinds of brands. This brand is just the one I choose. There's tons of brands out there. Um, and if you're coming to a retreat, bring it with you because you never know when you've got to put something in the book and go back to it. It's just like I'm going to put this little mat I made or this template I made for my um, angle pocket in its pocket. All right, we're now to the back of page two. Now the back of page two, and remember, oh, on the back of page, yeah, I already told you all that. Okay, move on, Bonnie. So we need our flaps that measure five by seven and a half. And there's another magnet. So let me get the magnet out right off the bat. I find it's just easier just to snip the packaging sometimes. I always try to do it with my fingers. I think it's I just don't have very strong fingers. And that's all it is. Those are two magnets. Setting them on that special little magnet. Let's talk about the size of these flaps. So, oh yes, this is our, so let me bring the book back in. So here's what we're doing on this page. We have a flap that opens to the left, and then we have a flap that opens top and bottom. Now, what I did is I measured this as all one piece of paper. So that's where the instructions have to happen. So right now, what I have is I have a piece of cardstock that I cut at five, no, Lost my place. Back of page two, up at the top. Yes, I have a piece of cardstock that I cut at five by seven and a half. Now on the seven and a half inch side, I am going to go to my big cutter and cut it at three and three quarters. I'm gonna do that first. Or, no, I'm gonna do something else first. And that's not what I told you in the instructions, so I'm going to stay with what I had planned to do. So three and three quarters. So let me move this. So I just got to get to my big cutter. All right, so there are the two pieces now cut at three and three quarters. Let's remove our scoreboard or format. And on these pieces, so with the three and three quarters along the top, okay, Diane, I know it does that sometimes and I don't know why. Hello, Miss Pamela. Ah, uh, yes, you're always in meetings. Thanks, Pam. That's very kind of you. So at, on the three and three quarter inch side, we are scoring at one half. And we are doing that on both pieces. So one half. 
And on this smaller flap, I think I gave you four and a half by six and a quarter. And we scored at one half. All right, so we're gonna fold on those half inch score lines, burnish them, do all that first. And burnish. All right, now I just wanna bring the book back in for a second. Put it back where I had it. Now, what I did, and it shouldn't matter which way you do it, you can either put this half inch tab on first, because remember, it's just a little shorter than the base page, or you can put your flaps that are going to be at the bottom and the top of the page in the book. I think today I am going to put my three and three quarter inch flaps in first. Okay. Like I say, it, in, in my opinion, it doesn't matter which way you do this. I think it's which way you're more comfortable doing this. So you're going to want to start with one and you're centering it because remember, it doesn't completely cover, like it's, it's not side to side on the base page. So get the book the right way. So it's not covering the base page from the right hand, right hand side to the left hand side. So I'm going to center one of them first. So I'm going to center the bottom one first. And I'm going to need that white piece of paper again. And we're going to adhere this to the base page. And like I say, I'm centering it side to side. Like so add adhesive to that half inch tab. goes so you know what works you might prefer it all the way the only reason I didn't do it all the way is I don't want to get caught up on my um when I'm turning the pages all right now this is the other side of that the other flap that's three and three quarters, it's going to go on the top of the book, on the top of the page. Now, this is where you need this flap. Because what you're going to do is you're going to line these two flaps together. And this is why I cut it as one big piece and then cut it in half. Because I find I, I personally have better success with my gatefold meeting together. And I'm really happy with that. So because I don't want to move anything, I'm just turning my half inch tab out for a second. Adding adhesive. I'm going to carefully pick it up. Now, for those of you that know me well, know that I don't mind getting glue on my fingers. I think it's from all those years of teaching preschool. I often use my fingers more as, as, as my diaper wipe or my white, wet one wipe than I do the actual wipe. All right, so there's your flap at the top of the page and the flap at the bottom of the page. Let's turn this booklet completely back around. So now it's in the right orientation, top of the book, bottom of the book. You're taking that second flap or that third flap, whichever way you wanna look at this, it's going on the left-hand side and again, you're going to center it top to bottom so we have no reason to miter. And we're going to add adhesive. Doing well on time because I don't like to keep you guys too long. That's why I'd rather do a two parter. I always list them as part one and part two, so they usually are pretty easy to find on my YouTube channel. I've never had anybody say they've had difficulty. 
Now you could have mitered these corners to get, take care of some of the bulk if you had wanted to. I decided I wasn't doing that this time. So that's what it's gonna look like when you have it all put together. But before we add the magnet and before we do anything else, I wanna round my corners. Round. And I, yes, my book gets turned in many different ways. Oh, thank you, Pam. Uh, actually, that's why you I can't do a live this afternoon. I'm going to get my new, I'm going to go get my uh, retreat nails put on. And around the other one. Actually, my new nails could look almost identical to these ones because I think that's what's happening. I often do that. If I really like a color, I'll wear it. All right, so there we go. Everything's rounded. Now, when you're putting these magnets on, here's a trick. I want this set of magnets to find my other magnet, okay? So what I know here is that this magnet is attracting to the magnet that's on the back of page one. That's not what I wanna have happen. Even though this magnet is going to be over more, so they're not going to attract because one magnet is here, the new magnet I'm putting on this page is gonna be sitting over here like so. I always like to get the ones that aren't going to attract. So in this case, I'm going to glue the X so that it's on this page. I hope that makes sense. I know I try to explain that every time and it never, as it's coming out of my mouth, I'm going, I hope that made sense. So here's what we're doing. I'm adding the magnet, good thumbs length in on this flap that's on the left-hand side, pulling it off, adding my tape. And the other thing the tape is good for, <clears throat> excuse me, is when you have magnets like this, and you're going to hear it, adhere it to the other side, and you don't have paper in between it, the tape sort of acts as the paper. And that way when you slide, because if you notice, I just don't rip it up or lift it up because I don't want it to rip any paper right now at the magnet. I kind of slide it and lift the page. And the reason for that is strictly to not rip my cardstock, as I have done that. I'll make a mess of my cardstock. All right, so these two flaps go down. This flap goes under. And there is the back of page two done. We're halfway done this book. So let's go to the front of page three. So the front of page three, this is that, um, show you guys. So the front of page three is a pocket at the bottom of the page, a shallow pocket. It's got two photo mats. And then it opens, actually opens like this. It opens to the left and it opens to the right. And there you've got two more larger photo mats in the shallow pocket. So in the pocket. So what's holding this pocket shut is the two photo mats, two smaller photo mats. So it's a really easy construction. Two flaps at the top, pocket at the bottom, and photo mats for the pockets. Okay, hello, Miss Lillian. So for the pocket, it measures two by six and a quarter. And I did cut it less a sixteenth because that pocket goes from the left-hand side to left-hand side to the right-hand side of the base page. Hello, Kim. You know what, Cheryl? This paper is just stunning. I am a, I do like purple. I don't wear a lot of purple, but I love purple. And this paper just sung my name when I saw it. So here's what we've got. On the two inch side, we are scoring at one half. We are rotating to the six and a quarter inch side, scoring at one half, then rotating completely around again. So it's still six and a quarter, scoring at one half. That's your pocket. And the flap that goes at the top of the page to the left and right hand side, you need two of these and they measure four and three quarters. 
by four and three quarters. And so it doesn't matter which half inside because they're a square. Uh, on, on one of the four and three quarter inch sides, score it one half and do that times two. All right, so let's bold on the score lines. And of course, here's your math. So we have two of the bigger ones that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter, two of the smaller that measure three and a half by four and a half. So we set the mats to the side. You know, to me, purple is like orange. It's a color that is so misunderstood. People just don't wear it. And I go, ah, oh, but it's such a pretty color. I wish there was more purple out there to choose from. It's like I'm not a green person either, but there are some greens I just gravitate towards. Burnishing all the score lines on the pocket. And now I'm going to do some cutting. So I remember where the two lines intersect at the bottom of the pocket. I cut right through the X. Hold it up so you can see. Anybody that has not. And try to cut straight because I notice when I get ahead of myself and I start rounding it. Then you've got some bulk, and I don't like that. Because what you want is when you folded this pocket up, that there's no bulk, that everything is laying nice and flat. Like this one's a little bit, there's a little bit of bulk here. So I'm just going to recut this one side. I'm really just shaving just such a little bit off of it. Okay, and I always like to burnish my pocket again after I smitered. And uh, see, I do have some orange. I love orange too. That's another. Yeah, I love most colors. I don't really think. My favorite is blue, but I, I pretty much love all kind of colors. Now, I mitered my corners on my four and three quarter by four and three quarter. I mitered those half inch tabs. And the only reason I did it is because get the book back in here is you do have to measure miter the one at the top and just to say which one's going on the right hand side and which one's going on the left hand side i do both of them but i don't have to worry about that so here's what we're going to do we're going to start by putting our uh, flaps in that go at the top of the page so there's the top of the page bottom turning it towards me top i'm going to take my flap lay it down and I'm, what i'm dry fitting for to make sure I don't have a wonky cut or something and I'm good oh good Diane I'm so glad the sound is better because yes I have had that happen to me because I know when I first started this tutorial today the Facebook feed for some reason it kept telling me on my screen it was being interrupted but when I was looking at StreamYard it was telling me all is good so what you guys don't know is I have my, um, my iPad is sitting here. That's the Facebook feed. My phone is over here. <laughs> That's the YouTube feed. And what you can't see to my left is my actual computer that's where I'm streaming this from. So yes, I feel quite techy when I'm doing this. But I love doing lives because I love the interaction. Because I sometimes learn things from you guys too. So I'm burnishing that half inch tab. I have not rounded corners yet. And I have not rounded corners because it just makes it helps me keep things straight. So I'm just rotating it completely around. So there's your gusset. This is the top of your book now, bottom of your book. And I know some of you are going, why does she keep saying that? One of my things when I watch somebody else's tutorial is if they rotate the book, I need to know which is the top and the bottom. So that's why I stress top and bottom. So what you want to do is when you're putting down this second flap, you don't want me, you don't want to be too close to the edge of your base page at the gut, at the um, hinge. 
because then it might have trouble folding or like the book page is turning. So I try to keep it back about a sixteenth of an inch, give or take. But I also have to be worried about how straight I am over here. So we're going to add our adhesive. And again, I'm not moving this flap now that I've got it in position. Just fine. This is what works for me. I know lots of people that just pick up their flap, add the adhesive, and place it. Just doesn't work that way for me. Burnish. Make sure there's any glue on the back side. Okay, and this is where I'm going to turn my page to make sure that the flap that is on the left hand side of the page doesn't impede with the folding of the base page and it doesn't. All right, so now let's move on to the pocket that's going at the bottom of this base page. So everything's back in the right orientation, top of the book, bottom of the book. Dry fit, I'm gonna open these flaps to make it easier. Dry fit, and I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my pocket centered You know what I used, I used, I believe that is what I used, Linda. I believe I used Majestic Violet, that that is the one I used when I was inking the edge of my pages. If you give me a second, I need a tiny piece of white scrap paper and you're going to go that's not a tiny piece Bonnie I'm just going to take one of my just want to make sure that I'm not leaving leading you wrong here yes so there's the book mm, you know what Linda I don't think that's the one I used I think I used, no, I'm pretty sure it was that one. Okay, we digress, but let's find the color. I know I stated it, but I stated in my instructions. No, I did not. This looks awfully dark. No, it is the one. Yes, I actually used Petunia when I was inking the pages, but Linda, Majestic Violet, you could definitely, I think you could get away with it. Let's, let's make sure I get that petunia off because it is a touch darker. The uh, Majestic Violet is just a little bit, I don't know, can you see? There's the Majestic Violet, there's the petunia. The Majestic Violet is a little bit pinker. So if that doesn't bother you, because there it is when it dries, so it's just a touch lighter. Oh, you're welcome, Diane. It's just what I try to do. Yes, uh, uh, there is a violet. That. If I have violet, it is out of order. So I, if you say there's violet, then there's violet. I just don't have my violet laying any place close to me. And I'm usually pretty good when I'm done a project, putting my inks back to where they belong. And I honestly believe I used Petunia on this project because the Petunia is the, is the color in the middle and it's matching up really close to what I inked. It almost looks a little dark up there. Now I'm confused. You know what, Linda? Go back to my first video. Okay, if that's what I said in part one, Violet it is, and someplace I have put my violet ink pad in an extremely safe place so that I won't lose it. Use violet. 
that's why neither one of these are actually because as this as this um petunia was drying i'm going it looks darker so someplace in my world i didn't put my my violet back where it belongs oops better find that before uh before i need it again and go where's violet okay i'll clean this one later just gonna lay it right in up here excellent all right so let's get back to this construction okay good that you said that in part one i said violet if i said violet in part one that's what i used all right so here we are we've got our pocket that we're going to put in the bottom but you know now it's going to bug me where did i put that ink pad i know it's here someplace it's in a safe place Who knows what that safe place is because i'm trying to get this album finished with you guys i'm trying to get ready to go away it's, yeah you know it's life we're zooming tonight with the zoom group so if you if you belong to scrapbookers you probably know all about the zoom group that happens every other friday night most months you can purchase your pass at countrycraftcreations.com. Then you get this, uh, then you ask to join that Zoom group. And uh, yeah, we Zoom for five hours on Friday nights. So I live in, I'm on Pacific time. So that means it's 4.30 to 9.30 for me. I'm adding my adhesive to the half inch tabs on the side of the pocket. And I did put my sellotape down because we all know that's what I like to do. Burnish. So I guess if it's, I've got to think here. So if it's 4.30 to 9.30 Pacific time, that would make it 5.30 to 10.30 Mountain. 6.30 to 11.30 Central and 7.30 to 12.30 Eastern. And it's just because the two of us that do the Zoom, one of us lives in mountain time, that's Tanya, and I live in Pacific time. So I'm rounding my corners on my flat. And just to keep us moving here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to round my corners on my mats after just to save a little time. So the bigger mats just go inside, flaps are, are placed, and then the smaller mats, the three and a half by four and a half mats are what keep that pocket closed. So there is the front of page three. Let's move on to the back of page three. Hello, Rhonda. And we need some more cardstock pieces, so let's let me get them. And this is another magnet because remember I said the magnets only go on the back of the pages. All right, so let me get those magnets out right away. All right, again. Usually this, I find that as we get down to, there's only one set of magnets left. That's when I have the trouble with the dang magnets. Hello, I think I said hello to Rhonda already. Yeah, it just wants to be a pain. Okay, I hope this isn't paused for you guys because my YouTube feed says I'm still going. So we're gonna hope that I'm still going on Facebook too. All right, so for the back of page three, we are doing this pocket that folds down from the top. 
folds folds down from the bottom. So there's the pocket at the bottom of the page. See, it did it again. So I'm hoping if it froze for you guys, just remember this is recorded. I know that my StreamYard was recording, so it'll be fine. I don't know why Facebook today is interrupting the way it is. So I apologize for that. So it's a pocket that's sitting on a flap with a booklet inside. So let's get this done. All right. So the flap itself measures five by five and a half. And you're going to, when it's up, when you have it in your scoreboard on the five and a half inch side, you are going to score at one half. The pocket that is sitting on top of the flap, it measures five and a half by six, less that sixteenth. Oh, see, so I, it must be just something here on my end on Facebook, which I, 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 I get that I don't understand that kind of technology. So I just go, it is what it is. So on the five and a half inch side of the pocket, you are going to score at one half. You are going to rotate it to the six inch side. You are going to score at one half. You are going to rot it, rotate it completely around again to the six inch side and score at one half. And then the booklet that's going in this pocket is a little bit different. It's measuring four and a half by 12 and you're scoring it at six. So it's basically, it's, it's just got a different fold on it. And for some reason, we're going to fix this. I didn't score it straight or something. There we go, we're fine now. So this booklet opens to the top and the bottom. Okay, let's do all of our scoring or all of our folding and burnish. And just needed some water. Okay, let's take care of this pocket and we're going to cut it just like we do all the other ones. So at the bottom of the pocket, you want to cut through the X where those two lines intersect. And again, on the other side, at the top of the pocket, we are just going to miter the half inch tab. We are also going to miter the half inch tab on the flap. All this mitering at the same time just speeds things up. Don't like to bore you guys. Now, I am going to create this pocket first. Because I'd rather catch an oops here before I have something glued into the book. So I just need to burnish my pocket so it's nice and flat. And then I want to burnish flap itself. And this is going to be perfect. So let's add adhesive to the bottom of the half inch tab on the pocket. And we're adding it to the flap itself. So the front of the flap, like I say, it's easier to build a pocket like this. It's on the flap before you actually get it in your book. Okay. Just need to position this just a little bit. There we go. It's kind of not sitting as flat as I wanted it. That's good now. Okay, open, burnish. All right, add some cello tape. And again, this is an optional, just what I do. Doesn't mean it's what you have to do. Just find it helps the booklet slide in and out a little bit easier. 
All right, add adhesive to the half inch tabs on the side of the pocket. The other one. Okay, and I'm going to flip it up and lay it down. There we go. And there's your pocket. Okay, now we are going to add it. Hello, Maggie. So glad you could join us today. Now this pocket I am centering. So here's my base page. I am centering it at the to the bottom of the base page from left to right. Kind of want to make sure that everything's nice and square and it is i am going to lift this one up because it's just easier when you've got three layers of uh, card stock so i'm adding the adhesive and now i am going to add my pocket to the bottom of the base page Burnish it well. And I have my magnets waiting up here for me. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm finding where that magnet is being attracted to the other side. I know I'm not gonna have a problem, but I'm just gonna flip them over so that the magnet that doesn't attract to this one is going to be on the base page. So we're going to remove the adhesive from one side of the magnet. I'm going to put it kind of in the middle. Put it up in so you can see. Sorry if I was out of the shot there for a second. You know how it is when you get carried away. Add some dry adhesive tape. Pop your magnet on top of the dry adhesive tape and then fold it up, adhere the magnet and add more tape. Again, I am going to round the pockets or the corners on my little booklet because it just makes it easier to slide into pocket. So there it's closed. There's your pocket closed. And there it goes. Come on, go all the way down. Sometimes when you first slide a booklet into a pocket, it kind of goes, I don't want to go in there, but it will. All right. So there is the back of page three completed. Let's move on to the front of page four. And the front of page four is where I have the pocket at the bottom of the page. And then I have a belly band that sort of acts as another pocket. So there's the pocket at the bottom of the page. There's the belly band. And then we've got a big booklet. I love booklets in albums. And we've got two smaller three and a half by four and a half photo mats or journaling cards, whatever you want to do on the back of them. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So there's no magnet on this page. I just need my pieces. And get rid of my note. So the pieces we need for the back of page three, we have a pocket. I'm just gonna move my booklet to the side. We have a pocket that measures, well, let me get straight here, back of page three. No, we're on the front of page four. That's where I want to be. No wonder it's not reading right. Looking at it going, no, that's not right. So we have a pocket that measures three 
by six and a quarter, and again, it's less the sixteenth. And on that, you're going to score on the three inch side at one half, rotate to the six and a quarter inch side, score at one half, and then rotate to the other six and a quarter and score at one half. So you do a, what's that called? So you hear, you do a 180 and do the other side. All right. And then the little band that goes across, it measures two and a half by six and a quarter, and it is less a sixteenth. And then your two photo mats, they are three and a half by four and a half. And the booklet, it measures six by nine and a half, and it is scored at four and three quarters. All right. Let's burnish, all, let's burnish all the score lines, excuse me. And on the band, I refer to it in the cutting guide as the belly band. And I like making my, my pockets with, with, when I do a second pocket on a page, I like making them like this because then you can have that booklet that slides right to the bottom and it gives you a lot more real estate for pictures. So I've burnished all the score lines. So now we're gonna do some cutting. Again, just like all our other pockets that we've done, get rid of that. Cut through the X. And half inch tab, miter, miter. And then the belly band you're just going to do both sides of the half inch tab and it just helps with things sliding in. So there it is done. All right, fold, burnish all those score lines again. So this paper knows exactly what it is you're asking it to do. And remember, when you go back and watch this on my YouTube channel, if you could do me a favor, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, if you could do that. And the second thing, if you could also like my video. And that's at All Things Paper by Bonnie over on YouTube. All right, so I'm just dry fitting. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure when I put this pocket on this base page, the pocket's going at the bottom of the base page, is that I'm trying to keep it away from where the page turns. So where they where the base page attached to the hinge, I want to keep my pocket away from the, the, the gusset so it's not going to um, impede the folding of the page. So like all other pockets, I start by only adding adhesive to the bottom half inch tab. And I'm going to this, making sure that I'm not overhanging the base page. I'm good. Again, burnish it. And add that adhesive. And on the half inch tabs on the sides. And do the other one. And fold up the pocket. Burnish. All right, now the belly band. I like my belly band to sit and touch the, the pocket that I put on the base page. So I bring my belly band right to the pocket. Some people call these stack pockets. So I just bring it like so. So what I wanna do is I wanna line up my belly band to the edges of my pocket. And once I have, I flip out the flap, 
or the tab, I should say, not the flap. Get some adhesive up here. There we go. And then I flip it back under, like so. Now, for the other side of this base page, I'm just going to bring it over a bit. Add my adhesive. And I literally just fold it across, making sure everything is nice and square. And then I lay it down. And that's how I line up my belly band to the pocket. Turn the page, make sure everything's OK. All I'm going to worry about right now is I'm going to round the corners on my booklet so it slides into that pocket neatly. Like so. Remember, the first couple of times you put anything in a pocket, sometimes it's a stick. And then you can round the corners on the photo mats. I'm not going to do that just for time. And what's going on here? Ah, my pocket was glued a little bit on the edge. That happens. I kept looking at it going, it's kind of caught there. Why is it caught? So there are your pockets or your pocket and your belly band for the front of page three. And now we're to the back. Of front of page four. Now we're to the back of page four. And the back of page four is a flap to the right and a flap to the left with a magnet that's holding it shut. So you're using four sets of magnets for this project. I use my scissors. I know I shouldn't be cutting plastic with them, but that's what I'm doing. There's one. So glad they marked these. Should have pulled these out before I did the tutorial, but I didn't think of that. Never, I'd lose them. If I did that, I would lose my magnets before I needed them. All right, we can put these away. That away, put this away, and keep going. All right, so the flaps we need, they measure the bigger flap measures five by six and a yeah, so the measurement on the cutting guide is right. Six and a quarter, less a sixteenth. No, actually, let me look at this for a second. No, I take disregard anything I just said. The larger flap measures five by six and a half. And on the five inch side, we are scoring at one half. See, that's what, ha what happens when you do lives. If you, whatever you say is what, what, what gets recorded. And it is what it is. Okay, I'm going to get my other flap first. And the smaller flap, flap that goes on the right-hand side of the page, it measures five and a half by five and a quarter. And on the five and four and a half inch side, you score at um, one half. And remember with this bigger flap, that six and a half is less a sixteenth, just so you've got room that it fits on the page. Nothing's hanging over. And it's such a, it's a hair. You're just taking away a hair. Hello, Chris. So on the bigger flap, miter, the half inch tab. Again, remember you can round your corners. Bring the book back in white paper we're almost done we just got the flap on the front and the back inside cover so what do we do i think we did this 
the flaps in that in about a an hour and a half, I think. I, I try to remember what time it was when I got started. Maybe an hour, a little over an hour, I think. Okay, make sure you're not over the edge of the base page. Looks good to me. Burnish. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have this, this smaller flap that's going on the right hand side of the base page. You can guesstimate where the center is. You can measure it. I am going to guesstimate today. That's what I decided I'm doing. You want to make sure it's nice and square. And I'm adding my adhesive. I didn't have to miter these half inch tabs because <clears throat> they don't, <coughs> excuse me. They, <coughs> excuse me. They don't run from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. And now I've moved it. So I'm going to have to just look at things for a second here. So what I want to make sure is that I'm nice and square when I look at my um, left-hand side of this flap. It's nice and square on the, the flap that's underneath it. And it is, so I'm happy with that. And the other thing I want to check is the turning of the page. It turns fine. Now, we're going to round our corners on both flaps. Like so. There is a magnet involved again. So again, I want to know where that other one is. Okay. So it is my negative that is attracting to the magnet that's on the back of page three. I want to sure, make sure that my positive is going to be facing down on the base page of the back of page four. It's just my little thing. And you're tearing the other half of this magnet all the way over here on the smaller flap. So I'm flipping the magnet so that the negative is going down. I'll double check, yes. Whatever magnet attracted to the base page, you're going to put it on the flap. There. I finally think I've come up with a way to say that, that it makes sense. Okay. Again, I'm just kind of centering it and giving it a good fingers width in because if you don't, then when you lay your pattern paper down, you sometimes get a little bump because the glue doesn't adhere properly. All right, there it is. Now we want to lift the backing off of this side of the magnet and fold over. And there we go, more adhesive. And again, this is just something I do because I like to make sure. Hi, Jamie. And then close. And there's the back of page four. So now all we have left to do for this, this album is do the pocket that's going to go on the front inside cover and the pocket that's going on the back inside cover. And again, you're going to lay your pattern paper down on the back of your inside cover on the front front and on your inside cover on the back. And then you're going to attach this pocket. So let's get those two pieces out because it's exactly a mirror image. I can't believe I forgot the magnets. The way this tutorial started, I thought for sure <laughs> I would forget magnets. So everything I'm telling you, you need two of. So for the pockets, you need two that measure two by five and three quarters. On the two inch side, you are going to score at one half. You are going to rotate them to the five and three quarter inch side, score at one half. Do a 180, score at one half. You have two of them. Then you need four photo maps that measure three and a half by four and a half. You want four of them. So let's fold on those score lines. 
and these are very shallow pockets. I didn't want to take the reason I made such small pockets is I didn't want to take away from the pattern paper because in my book, I used some of the 12 by 12s and cut them down to the pieces I wanted. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, when I took my photo mats out, this is what you were seeing. And when my photo mats are in there, they are complementing the rest of that page. Same over here on the front. There's my pocket empty. So you get to see that beautiful bouquet and the straw hat. And then when the pockets or the um, photo mats are in, you just see this little pocket and it just adds because there's the, not pocket hat. These hats are, these straw hats are throughout. They're beautiful. Well, well, thank you. They're getting changed today, Jamie, because I'm going off to retreat uh, next week and really these are two weeks old they're in terrible shape but thank you that's very kind of you all right so let's fold on the score line of the second pocket because we're going to do an assembly line here and we are going to use the repositionable tape again because of course like i say you you don't have your pattern paper down yet and the exact positioning of these pockets is going to be, um, you're going to determine that by your pattern paper that you lay down. So let me cut through the X, but on screen, I didn't, I kind of was a little lower than the X. You don't want to cut into the actual pocket because then you end up with a um, little hole and you don't really want that. But if it happens, your pattern paper is going to cover it. I'm always shocked at how much pattern paper covers things. And I try not to let my OCD get in my way too much when I'm doing al albums, excuse me. All right, so there's all of that. All right. So the thing to remember is I put my pocket over on the, so this is the edge of the back cover. I put it to the right hand side. If you want to put your pocket over here, go for it. That is totally, that's your choice. But I would, I'm probably going to have my pockets someplace closer to the right hand side of the page. Because what I, the other thing you got to keep in mind is you don't want, you don't want this flap to getting to be caught on this pocket. So again, I'm just using repositionable tape because I don't have my pattern paper. And like I say, repositionable tape is just like most adhesives. It's a personal choice. And there's a zillion brands out there. I'm gonna go about there. Okay. And then your photo mats. I'm not going to round these corners, but they tuck right in. Like so. So that's the back cover. And then the front cover is exactly the same. Only you're working on the inside of the front cover. So again, run your repositionable tape. And when you add, um, when you're, Adhering these pockets permanently, just add your, your dries clear art glitter glue just on top of the repositionable tape. Just something like that. And then again, round your corners. And your pockets slide in. And then when you've decided on your pattern paper, just lift off the pocket and add the pattern paper, put the pocket back on and continue to decorate. So when you use the repositionable tape, what's happening is you don't run the chance of losing your pocket. So there is our project finished. Yay. I can't wait to see what you guys create with this tutorial. Um, I will see you when I get back from the Orlando retreat. 
will probably be like about three weeks before I have another tutorial ready to go. Could be longer than that, just depends on how life is. But hope everybody has an absolutely amazing weekend. And if you're going to the Orlando retreat, it's going to be here next. This time next week, we'll all be together um, and have an absolutely great weekend. And I will see you on my next tutorial. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.